in America, people change. And if they don't change, they don't grow anywhere. If they don't grow, they never grow. When a man of God sees problems in a community, he decides who he turns it over to. The first thing he might do is investigate a little further to make sure that his opinion that he's rendered in a few instances is relatively valid. The second thing he's going to do is start tracking what he sees in observation. The third thing he's going to do is gather his empirical data and determine from the data whether or not he sees a pattern. And when there's a pattern, then you know that there's a perpetrator. And the perpetrator is usually somebody who considers themselves a leader, but most likely is not a leader in any capacity. Meaning they're not a supervisor, they're not a manager, they're not an admiral, they're not a major, they're not a lieutenant, they're not in any real leadership position where the leader has to really know their duties and their conditions that they're facing. When I see and observe a pattern produced in different companies and different grocery stores that serve me, I recognize the liar immediately. Liars also express their lie in their face. Most young people, most foreigners, don't understand that a business person is quite accustomed to the polite lie. We are accustomed to everybody saying, my company is the best at this. My company is the best in this service. I'm the best guy at this. That is not always the case because a real expert helps people. A real expert never interferes with other people as competition. In my own case, I sort of learned that gently over time. It wasn't that I was offended by competition. What I realized was they allowed me the right to simply say, I'm not sure I'm a fit for your company, but these guys might help you. Because what I could feel about that individual as a perpetrator of a business was that I was not going to be able to get them to listen no matter what I said. Listening skills is a serious problem today. The ability to listen without reacting is a major problem today, especially in the retail world in the industries that employ people by the hour. When someone's employed by salary, they have a different mentality because they feel secure in their job. They also understand a little bit more of the company's ethics, usually through a more detailed, hopefully marvelous training, and they also have spent more time with leadership above them because they were brought in through a recruiting process that costs a lot. What I know from participating in SHRM groups when I was running a business, looking for opportunities and trying to harvest the best way to connect with the right target market, what I discovered was HR directors have a lot of data. What we knew in manufacturing is how much it cost and what I also knew from my own research in that work of supporting a lot of different functions in a manufacturing environment as an interpreter that when I had to interpret data it wasn't as hard. But what I got was an education in a lot of different aspects of a production company. Production is what every organization does. They produce sales and they produce sales with people. What we know is that retention and attrition is 100% caused by people. Usually difficult people. Usually people who lie, steal, and cheat in a company. Usually the people who are the soothsayers, like me, the people who are entrusted at the top to be in executive meetings with chairmen are often hit up by lower associates who are like, you know what's going on, don't you? I used to have a friend in my plant named Sandy who would always ask me that question. You know what's going on, don't you? I'm like, yes I do, and I'm not telling you. Because that was my job. You see, confidentiality at the executive level is still confidentiality. Proprietary information for an organization that creates even something as simple as a stamped part for an automobile is still proprietary, meaning we don't take our engineering documents and go give it across to the competition so we lose the job. Most people who end up in retail end up there for a couple reasons. They timed out of school, either in that they timed out of interest to pursue something at post-secondary education, or they timed out of money. They didn't want to invest the time or the money resource to do more schooling. They might have gotten certification, or they might have some natural talents of leading people, or they possibly have some talents of doing things with food, or have talents in doing things with accounting, or inventory, or other skill sets that are needed 
in order for a business not to go under. What I see across most of the major strips around a college community, despite the fact that allegedly there are a good, gosh, how many, 20,000, 30,000 students on a campus, that companies that typically employ those people are really hurting for people. Almost every food restaurant has a sign out, we're hiring. What that means is you have to have a pretty good package, a good training, and good people to hire people. It also means you have to have a proactive manager or divisional manager who knows where to go to a targeted market to find an employee that will stay with you long enough to make the training and the time and your resources as a company worthwhile. If you can't do that, then that's your fault. Because sometimes people make it up the corporate ladder or make it up in an organization like network marketing by default. We have a guy in an organization I used to be a part of that literally just said, I'm just going to be the leader and the event promoter. And as a result, he benefits from anybody who comes in under. But he's not actually out there soliciting business too much. He's also looking at other type of MLMs, which most people who get in MLMs do eventually. They either time out of the people or they time out of the product or they realize that the money for the investment of time isn't good enough. What we do, though, in those organizations is create relationships. And a good quality leader usually has a good quality business. But if the coupleship is not sound, if the husband is a bozo or the wife is a clown, then usually somehow they make it, but eventually it falls apart. What we know in business is that there is data about attrition. And my point is that it costs almost a third of a corporation's cost in a salary to hire a new salaried employee. There are a lot of people that need jobs today, but there are foolish people who think they have the right to hack a computer, interfere with a life, and eventually they get pounded by the federal government. The liars of a community have groups and networks, and those group n groups and networks usually harm people. Because gossip, I have proven without a shadow of adult, a doubt, harms people. I saw it in manufacturing, and it's why I left after two and a half years. I said, I didn't come out of college to go work with junior high school people. And that was my feeling. Because I loved the work, I loved my bosses from a foreign country, they were great people, they took care of me, they looked out for me, and they listened to me. But when we're talking about attrition, when we're talking about retention, we're talking about a lot of things. But we're also talking about discrimination, that people do not have the right to discriminate today. But what companies try to do is make it look like they're not discriminating. What they don't understand is that a person like me, who does the work that I do outside of being in poverty, sees patterns. And patterns always show up in employees. 